Good evening, everyone. I'm Berthony McDermott. Filling in for Makush Lapinder, it's wonderful having you with us. House members putting in the legislative framework to waive fees for hurricane victims wishing to replace government-issued documents. That's the thinking behind the proposed legislation debated in the House of Assembly today. Mover North Abaco MP Darren Henfield says the bill seeks to lighten the burden for residents of Grand Bahama, Abaco, and the surrounding Keys. The bill covers documents like marriage, death, birth certificates and driver's license, NIB cards and passports. The passport office, Mr. Speaker, replaced some 1,602 passports between the 3rd and 30th of September. 408 from Grand Bahama and 1,122 from the island and keys of Abaco. Mr. Speaker, Clause 4 provides for the proof of eligibility. All one simply needs to do is to provide a utility bill with an address showing one of the islands or keys in the schedule attached to the bill or produce another satisfactory document showing one's name and address and that is proof enough for the replacement of your document. Secondary Immigration Minister Ellsworth Johnson used his contribution to issue a warning to those who attempt to use fraudulent documents. For not everybody who comes ahead and says they've lost the document, lost them. Just recently, there was a matter before the court where someone re-entered the Bahamas after being deported. One re-entered after harboring with false documents. And, and purported to present the document back to the Immigration Department. Very shortly you will see in the paper someone will be certified as a ju Justice of the Peace. Stop producing fraudulent documents. We're, we're going through them. Do not come to the department with a dead person's birth certificate. Now it's no secret that Hurricane Dorian's widespread destruction and devastation has driven considerable international organizations to the Bahamas all offering humanitarian service. But in welcoming these groups, the Yamakor MP stressed the importance of the Bahamas remaining vigilant. One of the things that the world would never want OECD or the Financial Action Task Force is really pressing with regulations is that we don't have an appreciation for who comes and who goes. We can't have persons just turning up on our shores and it's happened. Plain load of persons come and they disembark. And you're having to say, wait, wait a second, you have to come over to immigration. And they say, no, we thought, we had heard that you can just fly in. No, it doesn't work that way. We still have to protect the right of Bahamians just to be first in line for certain uh, jobs, for jobs. Meantime, the opposition has no objections to the replacement of government documents bill. However, the PLP deputy leader Chester Cooper says that they are a little surprised that the House did not get to this point before now. Mr. Cooper also pointed out that he had hopes that the proposed legislation would have had established timelines for the replacement of documents in a streamlined process, adding that although it is retroactive seven weeks later, persons who would have replaced these documents prior to the legislation would be refunded fees paid. Meantime, on the issue of government documents, the PLP deputy questioned the renewal process of passports, particularly for family islanders, which he says is a nightmare. I was amazed the other day to learn of a 50-year-old Bahamian woman who had a passport all her life being asked for birth certificates and marriage certificates of her parents. But she has had a passport that the government gave her. Both of her parents had passports that the government gave them. Why do they need to get the documents over again when they have passports <coughs> by you? It's quite astounding. Uh, and then the process of renewal of passport for family island. This has to be looked at. We're talking about renewals. <laughs> renewals. I guess not. Where a person's already have passed and don't get either, so why did you do anything about it? Presumably, there ought to be a process. <laughs> Presumably, there ought to be a process where family islanders present themselves in the administrator's office uh, to just validate that they are who they are, and then there can be a process of issuance of the PLP deputy leader says low-hanging fruits must be addressed as this all speaks to the lack of ease of doing business. Chamber of Commerce CEO Jeffrey Beckles looking at Hurricane Dorian from a different angle. As he says, Dorian has provided a number of opportunities. 
Take Abaco, for instance. Beckel says Dorian provided the opportunity for the government to look at town planning. Instead of rebuilding for the 17,000 residents, Beckel suggests building for 40,000. Additionally, he says the opportunity was also created for energy reform. We can't just build stronger homes and expect to, in the same place, and expect to take on a Category 5 storm. We have to be smarter than that. So it provides us a great opportunity. It also provides us a great opportunity for energy reform. You can imagine Abaco being used as a template for what energy reform ought to look like in 20, 30 years in the New Bahamas. These are some of the opportunities that it'll, that it'll provide for us. Fiscal planning should also be addressed post-Dorian as the impact of the monster hurricane is estimated to be between $250 and $450 million. Truth be told, when we start talking about fiscal planning and fiscal responsibility, the truth is, every, Dorian has shown us very clearly, everything we do affects our economy. So then why not embrace this opportunity then to rebuild a Abaco in an eastern Grand Bahama with the future in mind. So our view is to take a look at what do we want to be in 20 and 30 years and begin to think about this new plan for Abaco 20 years, 30 years down the road. The Chamber of Commerce CEO further opined that residents impacted by Dorian ought not be concerned about employment. While the jobs they once had may no longer be up and running, Beckel stressed that there is much work to be done in these affected areas. This, he said, will require collaboration between the government and the private sector. Beckel's comments came during his address to the Rotary Club of East Villa. A leading clergyman's admonishing Bahamians to stop demeaning untrue comments about Haitian nationals and instead find ways to live together in peace and harmony. Dedicating a good chunk of his charge to the 116th Anglican Synod, Bishop of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Island, Leish Boyd, says Bahamians must stop saying that Haitians in particular come and take while giving little or nothing to the country, as this is simply not true. Furthermore, Haitians, he said, have a keen sense of family life and look after their children in the vast majority of cases. They attend PTA meetings when many Bahamians do not, and many of their children excelled ex academically because this is a priority in their homes. As for the increasing tension over illegal migration post-Dorian, the Archbishop has strongly urged that calmer heads prevail in the debate as some of the rhetoric and what he called extreme language thus far is extremely provocative and not helpful to harmony. Sensitivity, he added, must prevail. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.